I am so happy to be back in Washington Square for the beginning of the 35th annual Stop the Drug War Parade, formerly known as the Pot Parade. 35 years ago, nobody knew about something called AIDS. Nobody could know that marijuana would be vital for keeping people with AIDS alive. Because nobody had AIDS yet. Now we know that these people, along with cancer chemo people, and multiple sclerosis people, and glaucoma people, need medical marijuana. Now we know that there's a psychedelic drug from Africa that with a single dose can get people off of heroin, speed, alcohol, cigarettes, and crack, and turn them back into human beings who just smoke marijuana. That we can take methadone clients today and give them Ibogaine, and a week from now, they'll be medical marijuana patients. And marijuana is much less hard on the body than that methadone. Nobody knew that we would have to come out for clean needles. Because we don't want people to get hepatitis C or get the immune deficiency virus or other bloodborne diseases. So over the time, this has evolved from a marijuana parade into a parade demanding that the government stop the war on all drug users. Because nobody should have to go to jail because they have a small amount of drugs on them. Even if I don't approve of those drugs, it doesn't do any good to put those people through central booking because they have a bag with some white powder. Now I have a different way of dealing with white powders. I have a medical solution to white powders and I want to be able to talk the people who are addicted to white powders about Ibogaine and not have to worry that in the middle of the conversation they're going to be arrested. Why not ask? And everybody who's seriously into health care agrees with me that the answer to the problem of drugs and addiction is not more cops in jails. No. The answer is a medical answer. The answer is to give people their rights and treat them like human beings. My name is Dimitri Majanis. Thanks, Dana. Um, I represent uh, the New York Users Union, Vocal, and also Freedom Root, uh, a drug user self-help group that provides Ibogaine treatments in spite of the law here in New York City. Um, just on a real personal, well, just on a real emotional level, I'm so fucking sick of their wars, man. I'm so sick of the wars all over the world. I'm so sick of the wars here and the manifestation of those wars and the, and, and, and the bodies and the wrecked lives. It's enough. It's enough. Um, how do you wrap the war on drugs in? with the global war look at the history of this country with the way they manipulated the laws of marijuana and heroin and cocaine racist, classist, sexist, imperialistic look what's going down in South America and let me tell you something before this shit that they started laying on the South Asian brothers and sisters and our Muslim brothers and sisters they had the dope fiend they had the Willie Hortons, and they can bring us out any time they need another scapegoat. We're easy. We're an easy target. We're an easy target. We can still be tommed in movies, disrespected, and denied medical access in hospitals. Our children taken away from us. Our homes broken into. It's not that big a jump 
from kicking in somebody's door than kicking in somebody's country. If you're talking about money, if you just say, I'm a fiscal conservative, it doesn't make any fucking sense. If you're talking about, from a humanitarian point of view, it doesn't make any sense. And if you're talking about a law enforcement point of view, if you go to some place like Canada, like, like uh, Vancouver, or Sweden, where they have legal heroin, you know who loves it? The cops. The cops love it. Because they don't have to deal with this shit. It's not a crime. Okay, look. I'll talk about Ibogaine real quick. But what I'm trying to say, as a drug user, I haven't used in five years, but I'm still a drug user. Okay, I still identify. What I'm saying is, needle exchange is great. Medical marijuana is great. Ibogaine is great. Drop the Rock is great. But it's not fucking enough. That's right. It's not enough. I want my human and civil rights. And one of those rights is the right to put anything I want in my body if I so choose. I am an adult. I am an American. I am a child of God. And I'm a citizen of the world. Now we're talking about Ibogaine. Ibogaine, real quick, is an hallucinogen. It comes from Africa, from the Bwiti people. It is a sacrament that has been ingested for thousands of years in Gabon, West Africa. It is a healing drug. You trip on it, but it's a healing drug in the sacrament. Now this drug, this sacrament, when ingested, will return an active drug user to a pre-addictive state. You may say I'm crazy. I was on cocaine, heroin, and methadone for over 20 years. And I had to leave the country to go take the only thing that could take me to a pre-addictive state. I'm not going to say cured, because I'm not even sure if it's a disease. I don't know about that. I know I was fucked up. I know I was in and out of the police station. I know that I was unable to function. I was at that point in my use. One treatment, one amazing experience later, I haven't used drugs in five years. Now, what we've been doing in New York City is taking matters into our own hands, following in the footsteps of other movements, following in the footsteps of other movements and taking matters into our own hands and giving treatments in New York City. Even this is a Schedule One felony, and I want to announce something today. Later on in the day, somewhere in this city, we will be taking an informed drug user and giving them the sacrament of Ibogaine and as an act of self-determination, um, self civil disobedience, healing and love. And we will it'll be the 153rd person we've treated so far, and we're going to keep on doing it because it's our right, regardless of what the fucking law says, regardless of what the doctors say, this shit works, it works for me. And you know what doesn't work? The goddamn wars. Yeah. I'm just gonna end it like I started. I am so sick of the fucking wars. Thank you. Anyway, folks, I have a confession to make. Uh, eight years ago, I made. I did not know it. I made a uh, contribution to the uh, Bush committee for president. No. I didn't know when I bought an ounce of cocaine from the guy. <laughs> you guys out there who are doing drugs, doing drugs or helping out the terrorists. I helped out the terrorists for 30 years. We're fighting, this is a big fight, we're fighting the cicadas. America's fighting against Lake, the quesadillas. We're fighting the Lake cicadas everywhere. I want to protect your rights. I want to, I want to hide your rights to protect your rights. I need to, I need to put them in a case and protect them. Listen, we have 90, about 200 people here, 125 are narcotics agents, so I know well. They're all undercover. They left their white sheets and hoods back in Long Island. The guys in blue, I like you guys. The guys are undercover narcotics agents. I know the gig, all right? They're roundup crews, that's all. They're, 
The roundup crews are not police officers. They're roundup crews. They're posses for Mayor Bloomberg for forty thousand dollars a year, and they get the detective shield after two years of rounding up black kids in the village. I know what it's all about. What you've got to do out there is start taking photos. Get your digital cameras out and start taking photos of Raymond. I call him racial profiling Kelly. That's what he is. When he was at the customs department, there was a big scandal because he is Mr. Racial Profiling. Bloomberg is a Yiddish word that means Giuliani. <laughs> And you got these guys from Long Island who are whacked out on steroids. You, you can't miss them. They're like this. You know. There's a black kid smoking a joint. Let's go. You notice they never go to Wall Street. They never go to the Upper East Side. It's always down here in the village, the East Village. This is really great police work. You guys out there do your job. You really do. And I appreciate the guys in blue because I know detectives in homicide. I know guys in blue. They don't like the narcotics agents. So Okay? Because they're not cops. They're just roundup crews. They're cowboys. They're posses. I take photos of them all the time. There's always three guys. In the meantime, if there's ever a terrorist attack, you can blame Bloomberg and you can blame Kelly because you got 8,000 undercover narcotics agents who would better serve the city directing traffic yeah! or looking for C4 without violating Fourth Amendment rights. That's what those guys should be doing. Those guys in blue, they know it, man. You guys are good men, all right? You'd rather give out desk appearance tickets to narcotics agents. They need to arrest eight guys, put them in a van, all right? Get their little bit of overtime and then get that gold shield. Become a detective. These guys couldn't solve a murder to save their lives, and they're called detectives. Kelly Savalas is rolling in his grave right now. As is McLeod. You guys go back to Long Island and do something. We don't need you here, you guys who are narcotics agents. Go back there. Redeploy these troops. Let them direct traffic. Something. Go to the Yankee game and look for C4. But stay out of this neighborhood. You're not wanted. You're not hip. You're not fun. Get out. Posting photos of narcotics agents in this area. I know there are guys out here taping people, all right? That's what you decided to do in your lifetime, is to tape people, all right, for the police department. That's the short life you have, you decided to tape people. What a great life. I bet your parents are really proud of you. Like those narcotics agents when they go home. Hey, Dad, what did I do today? I busted a guy for a dime bag. Great. <laughs> what a great contribution to society. All right, we have to, we all have to get together now. We need more of the people from the anti-global yeah! warming movement at these kinds of rallies. Yeah! Yeah! All right, because the people I represent in prison want free air. They don't give a shit if it's clean or dirty. They want free air. And so we have to form a massive movement. Please get a digital camera and start taking photos of these guys. We had 510,000 510, stops and frisk in this city last year. 510,000. That's more than they had in Berlin in 1938. All right, so and it's all black and Latino kids that they're doing and they say it's for guns. No, it's for narcotics is what they're doing. Get their arrests. So this is a fascist city. It's becoming worse and worse under Bloomberg. The government you have elected is an operative. In Venezuela, Hugo Chavez just nationalized the oil companies. In Brazil, for those of you who are aware of what happened yesterday, it was a good day and I've got some good news for you. They have taken away the patent from Merck for the AIDS medicine. In Venezuela, they're going to do it next. In Brazil, they've replaced the Merck medicine with generic medicine, which means that the people of Brazil will be able to live and not have to die because they can't afford that medicine. By taking away the patent, the copyright of a drug whose access only slowed the process, this man is showing a humanity, President Lula of Brazil.
We are judged by the leadership that we have. The government you have elected is an operative. Well, I am so happy to be back in Washington Square yeah! for the beginning of the 35th annual Stop the Drug War Parade, formerly known as the Pot Parade. Yeah! 35 years ago, marijuana is much less hard on the body than that methadone. Nobody knew that we would have to come out for clean needles. Because we don't want people to get hepatitis C or get the immune deficiency virus. Nobody knew about something called AIDS. Nobody could know that marijuana would be vital for keeping people with AIDS alive. Because nobody had AIDS yet. Now we know that these people, along with cancer chemo people, and multiple sclerosis people, and glaucoma people, need medical marijuana. That's right. Now we know that there's a psychedelic drug from Africa that with a single dose can get people off of heroin, speed, alcohol, cigarettes, and crack and turn them back into human beings who just smoke marijuana. <laughs> that we can take methadone clients and give them Ibogaine, and a week from now, they'll be medical marijuana patients. Yeah.